Hello, Slicey Dicers. This is Brian with another knife review for you. Today, we have the Real Steel Real Slim, a very, very accurately named knife. This thing is uh, very, very slim. It is a very unique design. It is by Helmut Yermer of Germany. Uh, they say that it was described or, or inspired by uh, French uh, kind of gentlemen's knives of yore. And I, I do kind of see that it does look a lot like some of the European, I call like peasant knives, you know, we're going to show one of them here, another German one, not a French one, but that it does remind me of. I do definitely see that uh, design influence. They are very inexpensive. Uh, you're looking at under $50. It says $62 on the Real Steel site. But uh, a European dealer, a Heine Haynes in the UK, has them up for 56 and we're usually a little bit cheaper than that. Well, the, the recommended retail is 62 It's going to be under 50 in the U.S. Once it's available in U.S. dealers, I couldn't find one that it was available at. If someone finds one, put in the comments down below. But I know it is coming imminently. They wouldn't have sent it to me if it wasn't. Uh, but a lot of you, as soon as I showed it, you guys have been asking me questions about it. So I wanted to, uh, wanted to get this up. It comes in either this plain gray or in a gold. Uh, Real Steel sent this to me without me asking for it. Yes, item provided by manufacturer and all that stuff. Uh, I probably might have chosen the gold. The gold's pretty cool as well. Uh, but I do like the look of the gray just because it has these nice pops of blue on it. I love that blue backspacer. I love the, the blue pivot collar. Now that blade shape is uh, is not not pretty. I'm gonna we'll get that out of the way. I don't think I mean, nobody's gonna say this knife overall is pretty. Um, it's got kind of a, I said, uh, platypus, but someone else correct me more. It's, it's a, it's an albatross. That, that is definitely an albatross beak. That's what it looks like, but it is very, very functional for what it's meant to do. Very thin blade stock, you know, it was inspired by these French gentlemen's knives that were meant to, you know, cut cheese, spread butter, things like that. It works great for that. Also, uh, best damn letter opener you're ever going to find in your life. Uh, the only one that comes close, I will... I will show when we get, that. this reminds me of, it's a German knife, but it still reminds me of this, that we'll show when we get to size comparisons, but um, yeah, it's it's a unique look, but man, for the price, it's VG10 steel, not bad at all, and it is, it is very unique, if you want something really super ultra slim like this, this is a pretty darn good choice, you have a little bit of billboarding on there, the Yermer design, and the real steel logo, but that doesn't really bother me too much, um, blade is com almost completely sterile other than a VG10 marking. And yeah, you're just running on washers. It's not like a fidget machine. We'll get to that more when we get to the action of it. But okay, um, let's do some specs and size comparisons before we go too much farther. Overall uh, blade length is 3.5 inches. Overall length is 7.7 .7 inches. You have a blade thickness of 0 0.08 inches. Handle thickness 0.22 inches. Yes, real slim is real accurate. I will say that um, for sure. Size comparisons. It's a pretty long knife, but it's pretty slender. We're going to bring out a couple of our usuals. We have your Spyderco Para 3 and the Paramilitary 2. As you can see, it's almost a PM2 length. And then We'll bring out the usual Benchmades. We have your full-size bug out and the 940. Didn't bring out the Griptilian because this reminds me more of a 940-ish shape than a uh, than a griptilian -y shape. griptilian -y, that is a new adjective I just invented. Another knife it really reminds me of is a Mercator Otter. So I have a couple of these um, from when I have been going to Germany. I like getting these. These are just cool little, same, same sort of thing. These are slip joints, but um, I just, it's got that same very slim, you know, kind of profile. So you can see it's almost as slim as that. And you can see it's just a little bit bigger, but yeah, it does kind of remind me that the, I said it's the best letter opener I've ever owned. Another one of my Mercators, I have a brass carbon blade one that lives downstairs and that's, it gets used for cutting open packages and stuff. And it's, it's really kind of beat up and gross because we don't take good care of it. So uh, this is my son's, I borrowed this one from my son. But um, yeah, these, it does kind of remind me of some of these old, old design, you know, from the 
1800s, early 1900s, kind of, you know, European uh, gentlemanly sort of knife designs. It definitely does. Uh, this blade is a insert adjective here, laser beam, all that stuff, lightsaber, whatever you want to call it. It slices like no tomorrow, 12 thousandths behind the edge. Uh, again, that very thick or very thin 0 0.08 inch blade stock. It slices so well. It still has a pretty decent tip on it though. Because of this blade shape, they call it like a varied drop point or something like that. Um, I don't know what I would call it. I guess that's as close as you can get to it. But uh, whatever it is, it does work very well for its intended purposes. I did slice cheese with it. I did spread butter with it just to see. And it, it does those kind of things that you'd expect those French knives to do. Um, flat ground, but man, it's such a good slicer. And VG10, not a bad steel. Real steel is pretty good with their heat treats and stuff. Uh, I haven't noticed this being... I've only had this for uh, eh, several days now, I guess. But I haven't really noticed. Like, it, I haven't used it enough where it probably would have worn down anyway. But we'll see. But anyway, VG10 is super easy to sharpen up again. Um, yeah, it's just a very, very slicey little blade. It's Even though it has a decent tip on it for its blade thickness, yeah, you don't want to do anything. This is not meant to be a heavy-duty knife. I don't think anyone would expect it to be. My biggest question with it was the ergonomics. With that thin of a handle, was it going to be comfortable? And the answer is, yeah, it's not too bad. I mean, it doesn't have the stability in your hand of even something like the 940. Because, I mean, look at the handle thickness difference there, you know. Uh, definitely, if you're really bearing down on something. And I did cut down through some cardboard once where it felt like it was, you know, moving side to side a little bit. But it's not uncomfortable. It is very thin. You're going to notice up here. I wouldn't call it a hot spot. But if you're working with this for a long time you're going to notice the thinness you know this lock bar and that jib being digging in a little bit but in usual use the kind of things you're going to use this for it's really surprisingly comfortable the pocket clip nothing you don't even know it's there the ergonomics are are pretty darn good and as you'd expect the carry as well is excellent it's very thin it's very light pocket clip doesn't have a ton of ramp and in like really like thicker jeans and stuff it took a little bit of wiggle to get it in there but other than that um it's perfectly fine it is very light you you don't even notice it's in your pocket there's no flipper tab sticking out anything like that it's completely fine um as far as the action goes deployment all that stuff um it is a bit tricky to thumb open you can do it absolutely for sure it's something i just got to get more used to i think um and they're a little sharp around the edges there but other than that you know it's fine i do find myself mostly two-hand opening it um that's just me i guess uh, spidey flick it forget about it maybe if you're really yeah i can almost do it but not quite it's just not that kind of knife um it's more of a slow roller you can flick it out with a lot of wrist but it's really more of a slow roller and it's definitely not drop shut or anything close to that but it's perfectly adequate for the purposes of this knife. Again, it's it's not meant to be a fidget toy or it doesn't even pretend to be. It's just a very unique thing if you want something very, very slim. Uh, I think it's pretty darn cool, and especially for the price. And I haven't shown the Real Steel packaging for a while. Again, you get awesome packaging with Real Steel. Um, this is the one that it came in. That's the stock number if you want to know that. But you get lots of neat stuff. I can get it open here. And you get all your documentation. You get a nice, a very nice little cleaning cloth. Actually, their cleaning cloths are some of the nicest ones. Their little microfibers are some of the nicest ones I've gotten with almost any knife. They're really, really cool. Here's all the stats and information and all that there. But they are wrong in the blade length. They say 3.2 also on their site. It is, it is not. It is a, It is every bit 3.5. I'm going to measure it again off. Yep. Yeah, just to make sure I'm right here. Yeah, maybe, maybe 3.4, but I would call it 3.5. Definitely would not call it 3.2. And you could see that just by it lined up against the uh, the PM2. But yeah, I think for the price, this is a very compelling little thing. If it was 80 or $90, I, I wouldn't be into it. But I could really see uh, keeping this. I'm probably going to because, you know what, it, it's not it's not that expensive. It's not something that's like really worth selling. Um, I just I just really like it. I, I'm really impressed by this. It's one of my most surprising knives this year. Uh, when I saw the pictures of it, I thought, wow, that thing is hideous. Um, I wouldn't go as far as hideous now, but I would probably still rest firmly 
on ugly, but uh, it's definitely a very workable design. I totally see why th th it is the way that it is. It's definitely a, a form or form over or sorry, function over form design uh, for sure. But uh, yeah, pretty pretty neat. It's just a neat thing. I just really like it, and I like you know I like the the otters. I always thought the Mercator otters were cool, and this is kind of just like a modern interpretation of that kind of thing in a frame lock. Um, I would love to see it, honestly, in a slip joint. Um, I think I'd probably like it even more as a slip joint. Uh, then I could definitely see, you know, carrying it when I'm traveling overseas and stuff like that. I definitely could see myself doing that. And maybe a uh, maybe an actual 3.2 inch in a slip joint. I think that would be an amazingly cool knife. And Real Steel does make some really cool slip joints, the Luna and stuff like that. Would not be surprised to see it as such. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. I definitely enjoy this knife. I think it's really cool. I know not everybody's going to love it. Some people just won't, aren't going to be able to get past the looks. And, and I totally understand that. But for me, I got past the looks. I think it's pretty cool. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. I've been Brian. Have a good one.